those salutations. It's time to light the candle of hope for Russia and Ukraine. God loves them all. And there are millions of Russians in protesting in their minds, if not in body, because to actually go out there and protest, you can get killed. And they know it. Uh, this is a catastrophe in the world, so it's time to light new candles of hope. And uh, that is the very best thing that any of us could ever possibly do. For uh, it's time to take our candles to light the, the world. And in doing so, we can make a really good discovery that thousands of candles can be lit by a single one. I'm reading a few quotes here. And the life of a candle cannot be shortened. Happiness never decreases by being shared. So it's time to become the light that others see. And these are there are two ways of spreading the light. One is to be the candle or the mir mirror that reflects it. And that sounds pretty good to me. So let's all start being a reflection of our Lord of love. For it's better, better to light one candle than to curse the darkness. And in this hour of the travesty of world war beginning, there are two ways of spreading light. And the main method is to open our hearts, to let that light out, to not hide uh, that which we have been given. And so praise the Lord for prophecy, because only by prophecy can God cut the time short. And this prophecy goes out to Ukraine and to Russia, because if people will believe the truth of Gregory Rasputin, he said that the cats uh, of abomination, Putin, would chase the rats of Russia and the Ukraine until they believed in the word of God, and then they would become the mice who eats the cat. And unless these days were cut short, Matthew 24, 22, no flesh could be saved. So it is utter heresy and it is witchcraft at the highest peak to believe for a second that we have to go and march towards Armageddon and the death that prophecy foretells. So uh, personally, my if you ever want to uh, email me, it's armageddon.owsley, O-W-S-L-E-Y at gmail.com. Armageddon, A-R-M-A-G-E-D-D-O-N dot Owsley, O-W-S-L-E-Y at gmail.com. Ironically, even though Armageddon is my email, I do not believe for a second because of what the Lord has shown me that it will ever need to come for prophecy. was never told to tell the future, but to change the future. So if everybody receives the very worst of prophecy with an open heart, set on believing God's word, just know it's not going to happen. Not if people will believe the actual truth that will unfold if we uh, ignore it. So it's time to beat the sword into the sickle and learn the ways of war no more. But in these days, it's going to start with one video, perhaps at a time. I am the writer, line by line, precept by precept, a little here, a little there. And so it's time that we all light that candle. Mickey and Minnie are tired of this world being a, a, a world of fear and a world of tears. I put it over there by Minnie so she can have a nice uh, candle vigil. But it's time to let our perfect love cast out all fear. So no, it came about in the late 1800s that... Uh, a priest by the name of Father Anthony of Russia had a terrific and yet a horrific vision of the end with great balls of fire on one side of the Ukraine and flowing lava from hell on the other if we will not embrace prophecy and pass it on to demoralize people in the darkness that do not believe God's word. And he firmly declared that the very worst of all wars would begin against Ukraine from Russia. And then from the West uh, in the 1800s, it sounds like the 1800s, 
because he says iron beasts would then bring in soldiers in iron hats and shiny shopping bags. And he lamented this by, by saying, oh, how many people will be exterminated? Uh, then he stressed that they wouldn't only be fighting with guns, but he also saw weapons that would seem to be throwing lightning. And if you Google laser weapons, they got them and they will be uh, uh, taken out for use. And laser weapons would uh, shoot lightning forth. And very few, he said, would return from that terrible war with shiny tens of valor on their chests. And in those days of war becoming global, iron birds would be flying across the skies before the prophecy of Isaiah 4, 1 can manifest, where there will be seven women for one man. And Gregory Rasputin would like that. <laughs> ah, we got to keep our sense of humor. But the truth is, Rasputin is the only prophet that can reach the prophet. Prof the Russian people because he is a Russian prophet to the Russian people with prophecy for World War III. And uh, so it's vital if you care about this world to pass on these, these videos. Um, and he said that uh, the masculine gender would almost vanish in those days of Isaiah 4.1 and women would end up wandering through the forest looking for traces of, of men. Uh, and they would even find themselves fighting over uh, a man's pants. Then he opened his heart really wide as he said this. He said, oh, dear brothers and sisters of Ukraine and Russia, the aim of the scary prophecy. Um, and by the way, this was a Russian that wrote this. Uh, the scary prophecy is not to plunge anyone into panic. So, such inspired words of the Lord from the, about the future are very biblical. And he was a priest. And he says, it is written in Isaiah 45, 11, that the Lord speaks unto all of his beloved people and says, ask me of things concerning the future of my sons and daughters and the work of my hands. And he said, command ye me. Uh, if you want to know, I will tell you what the future will bring. Here it is. This is the real future. If we will not allow uh, time to be cut short. There is no way to cut time short except for prophecy. Like I say, because if you believe it at the end and it's horrid, why go there? And so even bad prophecy of utter doom and gloom doesn't come forth to us uh, to intimidate anyone, not at all, but to warn, to warn all of his faithful. This vision has been written plainly on the tablets uh, so all those who hear it may run. And that does not mean to literally run Habakkuk 2, 2, but it means to take action. For in these days, there are going to be two kinds of people, the wheat and the tares, because this is a life and death struggle unto the end. The wheat will come with me and will warn the rest of the world about all this unfolding prophecy. For in these days, um, Crimea is one of the ribs that uh, the great Soviet bearer of Daniel 7, 5 is chewing on. Uh, the bear, a Soviet bear has risen out of the sea, foaming at the mouth, its insolence like rabies, full of germs. And in between, it is chewing on those three ribs, which is Crimea and the last two annexed. For these are the days uh, where it says, in the latter days it would come to pass, Daniel 11, 6, in the latter days. What is happening? The king of the north has uh, gone in and overflowed upon the king of the south. And that king of the north will be beat by the king of the south. And according to prophecy, that king will go back to Moscow. But then he will come back a second time at the king of the uh, south, according to Daniel 11. And then after he finishes the job and cannot finish at this point, he's, he's bit off way too much more than he can chew, thanks to the bravery of these people. Uh, so it's time the world needs to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord because as soon as he does finish the job, probably with nuclear rockets, then would come the worst where he marches into Armageddon. This prophecy is for a time, times, and a half a time, three and a half years once the battle of, uh, uh, of the king versus the north versus the south happens. And no... It could not fit anybody else. There is only one great 
bearer, and it is the Soviet Union. Um, and so it's time to warn all people, so that uh, to warn means to forearm them, so that they're prepared, so that uh, perhaps they will make different choices than what they otherwise would have made. So it's time to warn everyone who is paying attention. Um, and the Lord shall lead his people of love in such a way that a dilapidated world in these last days doesn't have to be it for people. Uh, if people will use uh, prophecy as it is meant to be, to use it as a spiritual and uh, psychological weapon against Daniel 11's Russian king of the north, the last czar, before Armageddon could ever come forth to demoralize them by the Lord's truth. And so it's vital, vitally important in these days to, to pass on uh, these virals, uh, these videos I'm making of World War III should be going viral, and nobody is giving, uh, giving it the time of the day. Um, and I, I, I rebuke every person that watches these videos and hears them and does not pass them on. Because you're playing with fire. I'm trying to pass people the torch to, so that they can throw the fire of truth out there. But if nobody will respond, no, it, these are days exactly like Noah. If people just don't give a damn, they're going to have the Lord coming forth with the great shit pie, World War III fullness. And he's going to put it right into all the faces of all those who will not lift up uh, the, all things of love, hope, and faith. This is beating the sword into the sickle. It's taking action. It's running. It's not thinking about things anymore. It's believing God and knowing that we got a job to do to save this earth. And there is no sharper weapon under the heavens than these videos about World War III that he has inspired me to restore because dust has been on many of these prophecies for many, many years. It came to pass that Shema... Uh, um, Archimandrite Sephirim of uh, the village of Rakanoi predicts, predicted the future development of great catastrophic events in Russia this way. Uh, that elder claimed that the future of Russia was revealed to him. Now, he didn't name any dates. He only emphasized that the time for the fulfillment of what was ahead would be in the hands of God. And he said that much would depend on how the spiritual life of Bible-believing people and uh, Quran-believing people would develop, how strong a faith that they have uh, even amongst the Russian people. And there are many that are devout and, and full of love. And um, so he says it depends on what prayer will come forth from believers. And I know there is much intercession happening in this world right now over this, but it's time to go beyond intercession and act by pushing out as much prophecy as possible. For I tell you truly, I, if you scroll down, you're going to find three full videos of Gregory Rasputin World War III prophecy. You will find uh, several more videos of prophecy from many different people in the world and they have all said Russia, Russia, Russia would start this and Belarus would be the uh, main ally. And so uh, he said that the collapse of Russia would come in spite of uh, its seeming strength and rigidity of the authorities and that it would happen quickly once things started falling apart. And uh, that is exactly where Russia is right now, totally unplugged from uh, sanctions from all the world's leading companies and governments. And so the, the, those peoples will be divided, uh, said this prophet. And then the Union Republics would fall away. The Baltic will fall away, Central Asian, the Caucasian, and Moldavia. Uh, they'll all fall away and no longer be allies of any nature to Russia because they, it is obvious as the nose on their face that Putin is the revealed Antichrist who is tossed into the pit with Satan in the book of Revelation, the king of the north who would take the earth to the edge of the, its very annihilation, a Zephaniah 1-1 where there would be no birds, no fish, no nothing left alive on earth, no fish, 
That did not happen the first time. And so Russia would begin weakening even more so that the autonomous republics and regions would begin to separate. And then there would come a, a bigger collapse as the authorities of the center of Russia will no longer recognize individual regions that are trying to live independently. And that's what's happening now because uh, people that would no longer pay any attention uh, from the czar's de de decrees from Russia. And know this, people, that the fifth czar would cause this, according to Daniel. The first was Peter the Great. The second was uh, Alexander and Nicholas. Then came Stalin, and then came uh, Lenin, and, uh, or the other way around. And But then the fifth czar is Putin, because he has just made it law that he will, can now uh, rule Russia for another 15 years, when he's already been there 20 already. So in these days, um, the Count, Countess Francisca of Savoy said that she saw the Reds' war machine coming against the rest of the, rest of the world as Europe became shrouded over in yellow fog. Now, uh, that is metaphorical, but it's literal, um, which would kill the cattle in the pastures. Uh, radiation, I think. And the Reds who will start that war shall perish in a terrible flame. So she prayed that the Lord would send his mercy uh, bountiful unto her descendants and strengthen their souls in that coming harsh time of Daniel 11's king of the north invading the king of the south, which has fully been manifested. And she clearly saw that great calamities would be coming forth as multitudes all over Europe began uh, perishing in the fires of war gone insane as hunger destroys millions. And when that invasion begins from Russia, they would leave no stone unturned as they annihilate many cities. And then the prediction of the clairvoyant uh, Ferenc Kusatawana uh, said that a terrible war would begin in those latter days. And he said he was really glad not to be living then for he beheld that war starting with lightning speed as thunder of explosives deafened the heavens along with uh, after a long period of peace. And the world has been at relatively pretty good peace for some time. The Reverend Father Kokasha uh, in, uh, that lived to 1964 declared and said that just as John the Baptist preceded the Son of God in his way, so too would the last Elijah, the latter-day Daniel, come forth, uh, and the preceding Antichrist of Daniel 11's vision, who has been both of them born in our time, um, in the days of the king of the north. And then he predicted that a severe crisis would come to Russia as that madman threatens the whole world. And he foresaw that it would be the work of Elijah alone that could cut time short through prophecy if anybody would ever give a damn. Uh, and it's for that reason that Reverend Belko said that he also had a great vision of Russia's most bitter end. And he said during the such coming times, no one would ever want to be alive in this world uh, that is already on the edge. He said one grief has passed, one war, and that another second war has already passed. But he, he then warned and said, but soon shall come the last one, the third, that will usher in terrible misfortunes unto earth, famine, sorrow, and destruction. The time is very near, and mankind is at the edge, and it will come about that a terrible spiritual famine will precede those days of death, since multitudes will eventually be sent into a war that will see none of them returning, since all will perish there. Rasputin said there will be a battle of the slaughter, over one million souls dying in one battle. And all of that most terrible doom would be allowed by the door, uh, by the Lord, said Velko. And whoever survives the famine will perish from the plague and the pestilence uh, that will kill so many that uh, uh, people will just be being dumped into pits. Nor should the 1996 prediction of Archpriest Vladislav Shumov from Moscow be ignored because <coughs> he said it would come to pass that Russia's third world war would set Europe on fire and the big sorrows would consume it. But he stressed that Russia wouldn't die in the fire because their main ally, Belarus, uh, until they suffered greatly. 
Uh, but but he said Ukraine will never unite with them because uh, Russia's ruler of Daniel 11's king of the north shall be the Antichrist. Now, uh, John of Jerusalem, a Benedictine monk born in the uh, uh, 1000, year 1040 in the German city of Weisel, he prophesied that when World War III begins, all lands shall become prey of war before the land of Christ uh, in Armageddon becomes uh, a battlefield, the Valley of Megiddo. And then death would go forward like a banner that nobody will want to read, for that hellish war of wars will escalate the most criminal carnage uh, that will intensify so much that the living really wish that they were not. Uh, and just like the Apostle John, uh, the Apostle, in 1998, the American Samuel Doctrine had an open-eyed vision revealed to him also on the island of Patmos. And he said, I saw the second angel holding a sickle in his hand uh, as they hold during the harvest. And within a twinkling of an eye, uh, he saw that the countries rejecting the Lord's message of love would be destroying each other by their own hatred. And he beheld that angel lifting the sickle for the harvest of love, and he moved it over to the countries of the Middle East. And then he beheld the great Hiroshima, like great mushroom cloud, as satanic fire consumed much of Iran, Persia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan. Uh, and nor were Georgia, Iraq, Syria, or Lebanon spared from such an inferno of utter terror. Then he beheld Jordan, Israel, and all of Asia Minor swimming within hell's hottest lake of fire, seemingly as all of their lands became covered with blood. And after all those atomic weapons were used as the blackest, uh, blackest smoke uh, of all arose into the sky, it was very clear that a, a a missile war was happening that would be poisoning the earth deeply into its ground, making it unable to be used for crops anymore for many, many years. And so let the wise prepare for the destruction of foolish people destroying each other. And, but he rejoiced in the fact that he was also clearly shown that all of that would be cut short, just as Christ said in Matthew 24:22. For if the prophecy of World War III is used as a psychological weapon, even the way in World War II there was a Tokyo Rose that always preached a demoralizing message unto the people that would listen. And this is all the truth of the inspiration of love coming by the spirit of prophecy sent forth as the most regal eagle of the eons to salvage this world before it's too late. Uh, so it needs to be, as Trump said, he jumped up and down a few days, we need a psychological weapon, a spiritual weapon, a weapon of truth. And this is this channel, people. And it shall prepare the way of life for all loving children of God, if anyone will bother having ears to hear. For there are no people on this planet that are so deaf as those who will not hear, and none so blind as those who will not see. Um, and he clearly saw the prophecy of the end would be cutting Russia, Russian, Russians much deeper. He's saying World War III prophecy uh, than any actual weapons. And he added uh, that it would be so great uh, and so much that he even cried as he beheld the massive flame of nuclear fire power rising into the sky. For the angel then said unto him, This is the last judgment of God. Uh, and the Lord said, He will cleanse and preserve and prepare his church for the last day by prophecy alone. Otherwise, it'll be like uh, Noah building a, a ark for no damn body that wanted a ride. And if people want to just die, just ignore this channel, I, I guarantee you. So in these days, he said, otherwise catastrophic happenings shall consume the whole world. Another exciting prophecy came forth in 1979 after a woman named Sarah Hoffman attempted suicide, but she was miraculously brought back from the dead by the Lord, and she was given a vision so that she could tell the world of her apocalyptic World War III vision that he allowed her to see. For it came to pass 
that she was clearly shown the end of the world, uh, that if people will not run with such warnings, uh, which she described in her vision, uh, then what would happen? Uh, 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 not good. The world wouldn't have boots deep enough for that kind of shit. Uh, and then all of a sudden in her vision, she had a panoramic view of Earth suddenly come into her seeing while she was in the spirit. And then the world at war came closer to her beholding. And it seemed, uh, it seemed to Sarah that she was flying towards it from outer space. So as she cl got closer, Earth got closer, and then she saw all the different countries. And when she looked, uh, the great mushroom cloud arose as multitudes of rockets began flying from one country to another all around the world like the old movie war games showed. I saw that movie and man it was no winner. It was always a, a, a losing proposition because they would shoot their rockets, they would shoot their rockets and the whole board just kept lighting up and the, the, the computer would say and no winners and no winners and no winners. Death, death, death. Danger, Royal Robinson, danger! <laughs> Oh, yeah. And in the end, she saw that the war would cover the whole world. Famine, devastation, misfortune, rebellion, robbery, and disease would begin reigning everywhere. And as the hottest fires of mankind's most unloving animosity flows as a bottomless sea of hatred, years and years will be reduced, she said, to months. Months will be reduced to weeks, weeks reduced to days, and days into hours. Uh, because if time is not cut short, our time is much shorter than anyone thinks. Because we are approaching the world clock, the world clock of our total doomsday of Zephaniah 1, where there'll be no fish, no birds, no mankind left at all. Um, and we are just seconds at this point away from the terrible 12th hour of days exactly like the days of Noah, literal in every way. And these videos are the new ark if you will. So climb aboard and please share and like and send forth this truth. If you will not, you are going to have your own ignorance very likely become the very uh, gravestones uh, that will cover your whole family's bodies uh, if anybody's left alive to bury them. And so it's time that all people need to embrace words of prophecy, which is the only thing that could cut time short, as Christ said uh, in Matthew 24, 22, when he said that unless these days were shortened, that no flesh could be saved. And so neither could anybody, nor should they ever forget the ancient words from the seventh century uh, when, uh, when she said uh, that the Lord of hosts, Adonai, would be thundering his anger in the days of Daniel 11's king of the north, and it would come forth as the lightning and thunder of his anger comes forth. Uh, and as that happens, he would be sitting on his great white throne where that carpenter of the ages, this is from a Sibyl from ancient days in the fourth century. Uh, they called her the Sibyl of Etamim. Um, and, uh, but the Lord would establish a mighty pillar of his prophetic word of life that would come forth from the great white cloud sent with his everlasting gospel into the world through the writer thereof. Um, and uh, that if people would not do this, that the inspirations of formal, uh, it has to be that the inspirations of former immortals would have to come to latter-day immortals, uh, or else we're going to be more immortal real fast uh, once we're out of our flesh. But when we're in our flesh, we are not immortal. Uh, but the second we die. So if everybody wants to hurry on up, just don't do nothing. That's what when problems really happen is when good people don't try to do anything at all. So these are the days when they need to mount up on the Lord's most regal legal of the eons uh, during his wing of flight of blessedness so that people can unite with the flawless angels together by the word of hope. And for in these days of the roaring lion of Zion, roaring louder than ever before, he is now sitting at the right hand of our great God to judge all warmongers uh, and those who thrive within the spiritual racism of ungodliness. Uh, and But before this world spirals out of control, the Lord will cause the Antichrist to be exterminated like the cockroach uh, that... Um, that 
and that king of the north shall find his comeuppance by the people of Russia. If the sickle of God's word is hoisted up uh, the prophecy thereof as a divine merciful banner of love's foretold deliverance. And I am pleased uh, to tell you that if you will watch the video of Kem Clement at uh, my channel with the long hair, I think it's there, I have two channels, uh, you will hear the uh, Kem Clement's prophecy of the assassination of uh, Putin exactly like uh, Rasputin foretold. But the words of Rasputin have to go out, and no one is watching any of my videos, people. Uh, I don't know why, other than everybody in the world is thinking that I'm a false prophet, because I preach that God loves everybody equally. So I suggest this. If you assholes won't start passing on uh, and agree to disagree with me on the religious religiosity of this world of Pharisees, then you're going to be frigged right up and this world will be destroyed because of your narrow-mindedness. Don't do it. Don't do it. Turn around. I love y'all. I'm trying out here. If anybody would ever give me the time of day or even a comment. I've been preaching to white noise for months and months because I know who I am. I am the one coming to the world. I am the only salvation of the world with this prophecy. And you better listen to Gregory Rasputin. There's three videos of World War III prophecy to Russia. And if this world does not support that, you guys are blind and deaf and dumb, really dumb.